We turn to education and the impact tougher discipline policies are having on minority students. It turns out young black and Hispanic students are far more likely to receive tough school punishments, including suspensions, than white students. Jeffrey Brown has more on the story. Those were some of the findings in a report released today by the U.S. Department of Education's Office of Civil Rights. Overall, the report found African American students are three and a half times more likely to be suspended or expelled than whites, and 70 percent of students arrested or referred to law enforcement for disciplinary problems are black or Latino. The report also looked at disparities in educational opportunities. Speaking today at Howard University in Washington, Education Secretary Arne Duncan said, for example, that schools with a high number of black and, and Hispanics are less likely to offer calculus. Even in schools offering calculus, Hispanics make up 20% of those school student body, but just 10% of the students actually enrolled in calculus. That underrepresentation has to end. Overall, while black and Hispanics make up 44% of the students in this survey, they make up only 26% of students in gifted and talented programs. Something's wrong with that picture as well. So we take a closer look at today's report now with Christopher Edley, Dean of the Bolt Hall School of Law at the University of California, Berkeley. He also serves as co-chair of the Equity and Excellence Commission created by the Department of Education. And Chester Finn, president of the Fordham Institute, which focuses on the reform of elementary and secondary education. He served as Assistant Secretary of Education in the Reagan administration. Well, Christopher Edley, I'll start with you and start with the issue of discipline and punishment. What, what jumps out at you? What's important here? Well, let me make three quick points. I mean, it, it is, uh, from a civil rights perspective, I think uh, civil rights lawyers uh, would look at these huge disparities uh, that Arne Duncan was just talking about, uh, and where there's smoke, there's fire. They would say that this makes out uh, a suspicious case that there may be some kind of discrimination going on. Certainly, if we saw these kinds of disparities in an employment setting, uh, people would jump on it. Uh, but the second thing I'd say is that, uh, and, and, and more important than that, is that uh, the expulsions, the uh, suspensions, uh, these huge disparities uh, in discipline show that we're really not providing each equal educational opportunity. You can't be providing opportunity if kids are kicked out of the school. And there are alternatives uh, to those disciplinary measures. There are alternatives in terms of, of uh, interventions uh, in training teachers to do a better job of classroom management and interventions to figure out what's going wrong in that kid's life. But the third and most important thing I'd say, apart from a civil rights enforcement issue, is that these kinds of disparities in discipline are highly correlated with tremendous disparities in academic achievement and academic attainment. That if a school is not successful at figuring out why Jamal and Jose are acting out, the chances are pretty slim that they're figuring out why Maria is two years behind in reading. So. Fixing our schools, supporting our teachers, intervening with our kids in a way that we're searching for a strategy that works for each kid, that's the civil rights issue. All right, Chester Finn, does it, does it rise to that level for you? What kind of implications do you see? Well, I'm glad they're collecting the data, which hasn't been happening for a while. Uh, and uh, a lot of the data certainly are alarming, but it would certainly be a mistake to see a racist behind every tree uh, in American education. The schools are not doing a good job with poor and minority kids, and we've known that from many indicators, including those that uh, Dean Edley's referred to. Um, and certainly one symptom of uh, school problems are these uh, disparate uh, discipline uh, rates. But we have to also keep in mind that uh, teachers and principals are trying to run an orderly school where kids who are serious about studying are not disrupted. And uh, it would be a uh, mistake to keep in class a kid who was a problem child as well. Well, let me ask you, stop you on that right there and sure. stay with you, because one of the questions I assume this raises goes to the so-called zero tolerance uh, yeah. policies in many schools, where, where an automatic suspension comes for a variety of misdeeds. Some of which don't deserve it, some of which do. If a youngster is found in school with a loaded gun, for example, I think that is an um, instant um, suspension uh, or expulsion cause. Uh, on the other hand, a kid who talks back to a teacher uh, wouldn't qualify or shouldn't qualify uh, for a zero tolerance, should be uh, given a, uh, um, a, a good dressing down and told to uh, behave better. Uh, so I think that uh, as with 
uh, zero tolerance laws in the larger society. This can be this can be overdone in school. And frankly, some educators hide behind these uh, zero tolerance policies because it means they don't have to make the decision about what to do with a kid. They can just say the rules compel me to uh, suspend you. So, Dean Edley, when you, you you broaden it out to these other disparities, and you already started to do that, you get data like this. What does one do with it? What what is what happens next or should happen next? Just to be clear, uh, and I, by the way, agree with everything that Checker uh, just said, uh, if schools are throwing kids out, suspending, expelling, this kind of discipline, uh, then it's absolutely certain that you're driving those kids away from a commitment to academic achievement. Uh, and in that sense, uh, this is just not good for society. Uh, we're focused on uh, try to improve not just the equity but the overall excellence of our schools because we care about the opportunity for individual kids but also because we know that America as a whole can't have the security, can't have the prosperity we want if we continue to run dropout factories uh, as high schools and, uh, and discard 30, 40 percent of our human capital. So it's the smoking gun aspect of this that I think is most instructive for those of us who are concerned with school reform as a whole. Interestingly, as bad as zero tolerance policies are, and I, 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 and I, and they, I think they are terrible and I think they're a civil rights problem, in schools where there is a zero tolerance policy, the disparities uh, between minorities and white kids shrink. So in fact, it's the discretion that's used uh, in the context of discipline or in the context of referring kids to special education where implicit bias may play a role, where the inability, the professional under-training, if you will, of, of teachers uh, may come to the fore as a factor in creating uh, the different treatment of kids. All right. So, Ch well, Chester Finn, let me the same question. I mean, what, what does one do with this data at the local level or at the national level? Arne Duncan said is quoted today as in the, this is really about self-analysis. He was suggesting administrators and teachers look in the mirror to see the good, bad, and ugly. And of course they should. And of course data are valuable for people running schools and school systems. Uh, some of this though is not within the control of the schools. Um, some of the kids who are being disciplined are coming from troubled homes and troubled neighborhoods and bringing a host of problems with them into the school that the school which has a, actually occupies a very small fraction of their lives, the school cannot solve all by itself. So I don't want to lay the entire burden here on schools. There's some larger societal issues here, too. You can look at criminal incarceration rates in, in, the, ju in the justice system, too, and see similar disparities. Uh, but some people do commit crimes. Uh, and, uh, and just uh, similarly, some kids don't behave well in school. And when you're, talk you're referring well, to disparities that go beyond the uh, punishment question. Way beyond the punishment mm -hmm. question. They also go to the academic achievement question, as, as, as Chris Edley was saying, to the uh, teacher quality question, uh, to whether you uh, learned what you should have in sixth grade in order that you can be successful in seventh grade, because if you're not successful in seventh grade, you're more likely to act out. And if you act out, you're more likely to be thrown out, uh, which is, of course, a vicious cycle that begins way back probably in first grade. All right. We will have to stop there. But Chester Finn, Christopher Edley, thanks so much. Pleasure.